a little bit of the bubbly. Welcome again, episode 121 of the Touchline Ramp podcast. This one is called Pulling Teeth. Like pulling teeth. This week we're going to be talking, uh, we're going to have a look at the FA Cup. Our we're talking about VAR as some sort of magnificent computer that's perfect in every way. Then look ahead to the Premier League. Bosses have been urged to stop people talking about football in offices. Look at social media usage by clubs. We are going to look at the January transfer window. Done. That is it, done. Shall Good. I, uh... Yeah, play it. Play the music. All I need to know for this section is are we in an office or another work place environment other than our little studio? Are you listening to this? Are you talking about this? Well, this is the thing now because I'm not football? sure because this is what Can we... you talk about football in your work? Well, can we now talk? This oh, is what I mean is, yeah, because we're we're currently, I mean, this is, we're working right now, and our work is to talk football. Are we allowed to? Because this week we got told... Um, we that, didn't personally. Not personally, but we heard of it by proxy. We got uh, told by the Chartered Management Institute head, a uh, lady called Anne Frank. Anne Frank said sports banter can be uh, can exclude women and lead to laddish behaviour such as chat about sexual conquests. I find this extremely offensive that the bigger side of her argument was that women in particular would feel left out. I want to give you a quote now. This is an actual quote from what she said. Yeah. A lot of women in particular feel left out. They don't follow those sports and they don't like either being fo uh, either to focus to talk about them or not being included. I have nothing against sport enthusiasts or cricket fans. That's great. But the issue is many people aren't cricket fans. Now, she's basically, what she's saying in that one sentence is, oh, women feel left out when you talk football and cricket. Why the hell can't women have, um, like football and cricket? Like, discussing football for, and for example, the merits of VAR <laughs> can be disproportionately exclude women and divide offices. Now, I thought that bit would link in here because although there's no women currently in the studio, but previously there have been. We've had women guests on this podcast for, to, before to talk football. And I can rightly now say that VAR does have the ability to divide an office. It's contentious. It does. It is contentious. However, the sex of the people in that office has no bloody, uh, no bloody sway on that matter. There's, there's more going on than kicking a football around mm -hmm. it's sport it is deep within our very nature to you know we trace it back to as i say it's a target game right so yeah it, it like that we admire people who hit targets yeah and it's that's deep within us and the way you play the game as well on top of that yeah it's it's a multi-layered thing add in say we're looking at football pushing at the highest level to to, to yep. go through what what like the human like to push uh human skills forward just like racing cars so any sport that's why we enjoy the sport yeah uh and it's like i said before it's how we play the game it's an insight to how we are as people how we react and respond in uh defeat and in victory and that is what in essence makes us human Even if you want to talk three hours of Alan Titchmarsh, then fine. If that's what rock you, rocks your boat, fine. Mm -hmm. So let us talk football if we want. We're quite capable it's as adults. It's anyone. It's anyone. And look, there's going to be... Like, well, it any, can't. It definitely niche, should be. As we do a football any niche, podcast. Any street. niche podcast. Anything. Anything niche. Yarn. Right now, there seems to be a mix of the way clubs use social media to their advantage, to their disadvantage, so on and so forth the way that clubs are changing how they use social media. Sometimes for the better, sometimes for the worse. It, d it depends on how good your media team is. Baby, baby! The obvious, massively great example of how to use social media is Roma English, which has been an absolute revelation. Bristol City, because they originated the goal celebration yeah. videos. I think they need to take have a huge pat on the back for that. You know, they're... An absolute dream. Those now it's business and it needs to be, it's at the forefront of everything. You're, yeah. you're the mouthpiece of everything you're on show. 
social media has transformed the landscape in that way, especially when you consider the amount of reach players have got, clubs have got in themselves, uh, and, and fans off the back of that. So it's like a multi-layered universe of connectivity. Baby, baby! We're li now living in the age where players sign in for a football club. Their social media reach has to make an impact on the fee that they can the you know dictate the agent off. yeah exactly i genuinely i, I have no fact in that but I, I genuinely think that is the case i think if you're a player if you sign a footballer say like paul pogba say you sign paul or pogba Jesse and his reach on social media is gigantic that is more than likely going to mean he earns more for you as a club or is more valuable to you as a club yep, than sure. if you are I don't know, Scott McTominay. It's business and players are commodities, right? Yeah, look, it's... Uh, so it's, it's a rotating cycle of business. It's The phrase I wrote out was brand new world. Oh, I see what you've done there. Yeah. Manchester yes. United? Manchester United recently... Whoa, another wormhole. After they beat Wolves in the FA Cup, they tweeted out a picture It was a misguided of, tweet. The misguided tweet. Um, who was in the picture? I believe it was Rashford and Martial, was it? Or, or it might have been... Fred, I can't remember who was in the actual picture. The picture's irrelevant, but it was two Manchester United players smiling at each other. And the caption said, when you realise you have to play Wolves, when you get to play Wolves again in like a week or whatever it was. And it's just like, what? Wolves took you to a third round replay. You beat them narrowly, very narrowly. We watched that game together and they beat Wolves narrowly. And Don't know how. now they're celebrating and they're saying, oh yeah, we get to... It's not that you didn't... You didn't hammer them. You didn't beat them like 15 nil or something. Do you know what I mean? It's like... And you have to play you've got a narrow one You nil. said that before you... Yeah. If if you did win this next one... So if then, the last two maybe games you are could, United maybe wins, there then is, it makes more sense. Maybe there's potential bragging rights, but now you've just angered your opponent. Even if they beat Wolves 4 nil, I still would say that's a poorly, poorly guided tweet, that. There's probably someone who's new... You don't know behind there because obviously mm. it's not the actual club sending the tweets. It's someone who's working for the club. It's not the actual player, your favourite player, sending the tweets. Like very rarely it is. It's their media team. You've got to understand that it is all a, a very fine veneer put mm -hmm. over that commodity. Yeah. Baby, baby! Have we got anything else to add here? Or we I don't? think, yeah. We, we'll see some more. Check out our social media because we highlight, we name and we should... Well, we don't shame. We, we try just, not to shame. We, we do shame. name because we want to support. Really, we do want to support. We're a supporting bunch here at a Touchline Rant. Yeah. But yeah, go follow us on social media at a Touchline Rant everywhere. Fa I say everywhere, not everywhere not at all. Like it's not everywhere. It's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, LinkedIn. Favorite footballer to follow, current or ex? Could be either. Uh, Southall, Windass. Mm -hmm. He used to be Joey Barton, but obviously now manager of Fleetwood. All his social media's gone. Mm -hmm. He was really good follow. Um, Alan San Maxim. Alan San Maximum has is is superb. He's incredibly good to follow on social media. Yeah. Um, There's a few. There are Raheem Sterling. It's a, a, a brand new world for football clubs. It's, it's a completely in. different world from when it was the early nineties. Like it's the Huxley book. We're we're all learning. We're all growing. We're all trying to get to grips with a t with social media. Where have you taken this, this to? beast that it is. <laughs> this is we're all. Script. No, it's we're all script. growing together. Topic. Can I fit a few shout outs in? You certainly can. All right, Tell can. me when. Shout out. Yeah, now. Jack Grealish. Yes, nice. Like it. Like that. Good hair. I think he is already an icon of yes. Aston Villa. Legit. Yes. Yeah. Legit. Someone with a very big presence as well. And I think he deserves more credit for maturing the way he has because it could have been a whole different reality for Mr. him. Mr. Villa. He's now the new Paul McGrath. Mr. Villa. Yeah, and because of that, I think he should deserve an England call-up. He sorted himself out and he's matured and that's lovely to see. Yeah. Zach Sullivan. Zach Not Sullivan. what I expected. Yeah, didn't see a did you come? No. Uh, in a hyper-masculine sport, which is ice hockey in the UK, playing for Manchester Storm. Okay. Actually one of the first players to actually uh, come out as bisexual. 
I in mean, hyper masculine. For a minute, I thought you changed the sport that we've focused this podcast I on. Know, but right? No, that's no, worth a shout in out. In a hyper masculine sport, that is worth a shout out. How do you feel about that? Yes, I, I mean, these are the realms which football hasn't done yet. He didn't play football. Yeah, but it's still a hyper masculine sport, huge. isn't it? It's huge shout out. Yes. <laughs> Callum Patterson, oh, Lee Tomlin. Oh, there we go. They're my two shout-outs. Now we're talking. Callum Patterson, Lee Tomlin. Brand, Carter City PR team. Yeah, How do you like that? Yeah, you chose good. your battles very well. To Bendy Gedignedia, thank you very much for producing this podcast. There we are. Uh, thank you very much to Mitchell Gad, our co-host on the other side of the world. Uh, thank you very much to CSK Sapphire Gardens, the team that we mm-hmm. proudly sponsor mm-hmm. across the, the front. See you next week. Lovely stuff. See you next week. There we are. We've come to the end. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you very much for watching this. People of YouTube, thank you very much for watching this. It is much appreciated. Don't forget to hit the like button, which is down this there somewhere. Subscribe. Um, subscribe, which is there. Which is like the red button. Not, it says we're subscribe. Not, we're not going to edit that. Press that. Imagine there's a subscribe. It's not, it's not. I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's Graham's view. How much it's, more it's, honest could he be in his challenge? It is a bit.